Thank you, Mark, for coming out to play. Hi, everyone. Uh, there's a couple of questions. I tried to ask everyone in the lobby about what they would like me to ask you in regards to this, and one of which is they want to know how did you become connected with the project? Were you familiar with the, with the original? And, and tell us just a little bit about that, that process of you being connected with the film. Okay, so yeah, I'm uh, very familiar with the original. I, I think I saw the first uh, Suspiria when I was about 15, uh, and it had a big impression on me at the time. It's very, uh, you know, uh, artistic and creative, and um, and I got a call from uh, Luca Guadagnino's office um, saying that he he had he, he was going to be doing a remake of of the movie. Uh, so I was like instantly really excited by it because. Uh, Luca's a, um, you know, he's a, he's an art movie director. He's not a trashy horror movie director. Um, and also Tilda Swinton was going to be in it. Um, so I think, you know, Luca had seen Tilda Swinton's makeup in the Grand Buda Budapest Hotel and really liked it. So um, I think that's where the connection came. Um, and then he was very keen to get me involved. So we started talking about all the various uh, gags that we were going to have to do for it. And there was quite a lot, as I was explaining to, to our audience, that there's so much more to this film. I was just blown away by even just the one makeup that you sent me that I looked at. And that by itself would be fantastic. But there's quite a bit and many, many different gags that are in this. How much time for prep did you have before uh, principal photography started? Well, we uh, Luca wanted to just see if we could actually pull off turning Tilda into a, into a man. Um, so we did a test uh, probably 18 months before the movie actually started, and we did a we did a test on uh, Tilda Swinton. Did the full makeup. Uh, it's totally different to the finished version, um, uh, and because uh, Tilda wanted uh, some changes, and Luca wanted a few changes, and we wanted to change stuff. Um, uh, so we, we redid it uh, for when the, when the movie was finally green lit. We had a long time to think about the film and research and. Uh, uh, I, I chatted to Luca on and off throughout the whole year or 18 months about various gags and he kept ringing me up and asking me about various things and we were referencing artists and all sorts of uh, interesting stuff but when it came down to it we only had we were supposed to have 14 weeks uh, prep on it and we had nine uh, and we had a whole you'll see in the movie when you watch it there's a whole array of characters that we did uh, full body suit makeups. We did. Uh, Tilda Swinton also plays Madame Marcos, the big. Well, I, w I won't give anything away in case you haven't seen it, but she also plays uh, another character in the movie with a big full body suit m uh, makeup. Uh, and um, you know, there were days we all shot it all in a uh, in a in an old disused hotel in Italy. Uh, so they took over the whole place and built all the sets there. So we'd be running around from one set to another, doing one minute sticking a makeup on and going down and we're doing a full body makeup on Chloe Moret. So I'd be rushing from one place to another and then going on set and squirting blood everywhere. And, you know, it was it was pretty crazy. Uh, but it was all in one building. So we didn't have any location moves or anything like that. So it made it it made it quite doable. You know, we we had a workshop set set up in the hotel and we just uh, got on with it, really. And I had a, a brilliant team of people working with me. And Tilda plays, if I understand correctly, three different characters in the film. And was it helpful that since you'd worked with her before, you already have her head cast and whatnot, so you weren't waiting for them to cast uh, you know, an actress, were you able to go ahead and, and start your initial sculpts? Well, yeah, that was, that was really interesting, actually. It's uh, uh, that we already had the cast there, so we were like, as soon as Luca rang up, we were like, okay, yeah, we can start tomorrow. You know, it wasn't like, when's Tilda available for a live cast? You know, we already had it there. So we just started, and we started, uh, uh, Josh Weston sculpted the uh, um, uh, Klemperer makeup or Lutz Erbers dwarf because Tilda was very keen on uh, the fact that we were turning into turning her into the actor that plays Klemperer, not Klemperer himself. So that's uh, uh, what, what uh, Tilda always wants it uh, described. So we, we turned her into this uh, German psycho, uh, well, this analyst, uh, this um, actor that plays a German, the German psychoanalyst in the film. And uh, Luca had a few ideas about why he wanted uh, Tilda's play. All the roles in the film are all played by women, uh, apart from two characters. So all the strong roles in the movie are all female, and he wanted to keep it all 
female. That was his desire. Uh, apart from these two incidental male characters that play the policeman that you'll see. And the other one was that uh, if anyone's seen Suspiria and talks about it or know anything about it, there's, it's about this uh, triumvirate of witches, uh, Mother Suspiria, Mother Tenebrao, and uh, Mother Lacrimarum. And there, there are three, there's the, a hierarchy of these three witches. And it linked into Tilda playing three parts in the movie. So the, the Luke had a couple of reasons uh, for wanting Tilda to play this part. And also Tilda really wanted to, to do it as well because it's almost like an art project for her. She always wanted it to be totally secret. Um, never wanted it to come out in the press. And unfortunately it was the paparazzi got pictures very early on when we were shooting, but then it all went quiet. And, and then somebody else found out and it eventually it got released uh, that, that she was playing it. And ever since then, you know, really, we, we were all hoping that it, that it was gonna be kept quiet really. And uh, it would have been quite a nice little secret to, to think that nobody would know that it's uh, Tilda playing this part. That was the original intention. Jack Pierce had Boris Karloff was his lucky charm. Rick Baker's had Eddie Murphy for so so many of those. Is is Tilda your your uh, lucky rabbit's foot, so to speak? Well, yeah. I mean, she's just great to work with. Uh, it's a total pleasure to work with her. She really enjoys the process of having makeup done. You know, it's a bit like you know Gary Oldman in that sense. You know, loves to sort of immerse himself in a in a role and uh, really uh, enjoys the creative process. You know, some actors don't like it, and some actors don't like it, but put up with it, she, but Tilda actually really embraces the whole thing, and she's a real, um, she's very an, uh, an artistic soul, you know, so when she's very enthusiastic, you know, when we did the old witch character in this, and, you know, she's like, wow, this is great, you know, like normally somebody, when you want to stick 30 pounds of rubber on somebody, they're not very keen, <laughs> but, uh, or stick them in the chair for five hours or six hours, I think that makeup took, you know, but, uh, so yeah, Tilda's just really great to work with. But she's got such a striking look and such an uh, interesting way about her. It's, it's great that she's such the chameleon. Was it from the start that she was going to play three characters, or did that evolve? No, that was. it was always from the start that she was going to play the three. She was definitely going to play the Marcos and Blanc, but because of this triangle of, char the, you know, of characterization, Luca wanted her to play the Klemper role. Mm -hmm. But he thought if we couldn't do it, that he would give the role to a, a man. Uh, but uh, he then, after we did the test, he, he thought it would, would, would work, you know, so he decided to go with it, yeah. Now, it's, it's, uh, well, I haven't seen it all move and whatnot, but the photographs are, the illusion is complete. There's nothing uh, unless, in fact, I've, I've had actually a great time selling people say, look, this is, this is Tilda, and I go, what? And then it, 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 you know, because it is, it really is that good, which is great. One thing that you are always good about is is giving people credit for the people, because it's an ensemble. And so obviously, you, you're here representing a number of people, and that's one thing I've always actually respected you for. When we did, we do the, uh, we take the Bake Off reels and we have them narrated. And when it was Iron Lady, it seemed like. Once or twice a day, Mark would write me and say, "Oh, I forgot somebody. Can we can we just put in this little bit, and can we get this next one in?" He's very good. So maybe this would be a great opportunity to talk about the people that were part of your team that contributed strong to this. Yeah, sure. Um, so I had uh, Josh Weston was the, one of the, my key sculptors. He's been working with me for a long time, and uh, he sculpted uh, the the Tilda Swinton makeup. He sculpted both of them, and the, you know the. The bad thing about running a company and having so many gags to do on a film, I get busy organizing everything and uh, have to relinquish some of the artistic uh, jobs that you'd really love to do yourself, but you can't sit there for you know eight hours a day for two weeks sculpting the megas. It took about two weeks to, to sculpt um, uh, the initial thing. And I was, you know, we were doing full body makeups. We did uh, the death character that happens, appears at the end as a full body suit on Mal Grosata Bello. We did have several blood gags. We have a really complicated uh, sequence in the movie where uh, an actress has something pretty horrendous happen to her. Um, and that took a lot of working out. So, you know, it's, uh, it, it, it's very busy. So uh, Josh Weston sculpted that. And then I had Stephen Murphy, uh, who's a great makeup artist, and myself, Josh, and Stephen applied the Klemper makeup, the three of us, so that we could get the time down really quick. 
Um, and then when I got too busy doing other makeups, uh, Josh and Stephen uh, took over and did it for the last sort of 10 or 15 days, I think. I think we did about 25 days altogether of uh, Tilda. And Tilda did, was doing Madame Blanc one day and then Klemper the next and then Marcos the next. And so she was working really hard. And then a whole team of uh, people behind that had a, an Italian sculptor over, um, uh, Andrea Usebi, and uh, mold makers. You know, there's so many, um, you know, people who don't get any credit for what we do, that, who are just, you know, vital to the process, uh, working, working well. Painters and mold makers and silicon runners and, you know, the edges have to be perfect. So the silicon runners, I've, I've got some really good people who, who run silicon, Kate Woodhead and. Uh, Christy Southcott and uh, various others who uh, run the silicons and they just strive for perfection all the time, you know, so if, if the edges are no good when we're trying to make them disappear into the skin, then the makeup wouldn't work. So, yeah, it's a whole team effort. Yeah, no one, no one person could really do all of that. Not that much work because there really is so much in this film. I have a question for you, the sequence. Uh, I really enjoyed that featurette that you posted and watching the dancer and her being assaulted spiritually by someone else doing this and there's there's so many gags in that how um how many sequences did it have to make for for that whole scene how much did you split it up yeah that was really interesting because uh luca had um um he wanted this woman to be pretty much pulverized uh from start to finish of this particular dance um and she's being she's being destroyed by the witches, um, because she's trying to escape the dance school. And um, we had to make Luca's design, <laughs> we had to turn it into reality. How do how do we actually do this? Because he had a drawing of just a, like a blob of flesh on the floor, and he was like, yeah, I want it to be a blood, I want it to be a mess on the floor, and covered in you know blood, and you know, we had to break it down. So I had to like sort of say, okay, well, how do we start this? Do we do one thing, and I'd uh, seen, uh, you know, I'm sure most of you here have seen Deliverance. There's a movie, Deliverance, where a guy in that gets thrown into the river and he, he could, the actor could actually dislocate his arm and put it right behind his back. And there's this, it's just a really horrible image in the, in, the, in the film. And I said to Luca, why don't we start by dislocating our arm and breaking it around like this guy could do? And Luca's a, a huge, movie fan, so he knew exactly what I was talking about. So we started from that, you know, so it was, the, okay, the broken arm, and then we do the same thing with her leg, and then we got this dancer, Elena Fakina, who was amazing, who could just crawl around on the floor with these various prosthetic appliances on and twist herself into these contorted shapes, you know, and that's how we ended up with that that sequence, really. And then initially we, we, we did the broken jaw prosthetic with her teeth dental plate. And it's all giving too much away. Very, very disturbing. Sorry. For Do the not spoilers. take your children to see this movie. Michael's, Michael's fault. <laughs> well, you put it out on Facebook. So I figured <laughs> oh, everyone yeah, it's to all see there that. on Facebook, actually. So I figure it's all fair game for that. Uh, any other pieces that we should be looking for for our audience to be watching this as this? We've talked about those. Well, we've just got other gags in there that are always difficult to do. There's a, a scene in, in the, the kind of squirty blood cutthroat thing that. It's difficult because you've got tubes running all over the place and Luca wanted to do this big long shot of her so we had all these tubes like 35 feet along across the room and it's, they all take a lot of setting up those gags and they're, they're terrifying to do because you know you've got eight actresses all sat around the table and you're gonna squirt blood all over them you know and it, if you trash all their costumes they, let's say they get the whole take right and but you hit the blood too early or you don't squirt enough blood or there's too much blood or, you know, they're terrifying to do. So, there's, you know, it's, uh, it's a lot of preparation. I mean, I think we probably it took us about six weeks just to w do that one gag and rehearse it and get it right and have double blood. I always put double blood tubes in so if one blocks, you can just quickly swap over and we prime both of them. And mm -hmm. so you've just got a little safety valve, you know, that like if one blood, uh, you know, you've got two people squirting blood, so it's not just one person because it can always just go wrong if it's one. And uh, yeah, then you just have to hope that they're good. So when, when you see that bit in the film, you maybe you'll un see now a little bit of uh, the effort that goes behind it. And then we had all sorts of gags at the end uh, where Luca was just saying, hey, let's do this and let's, you know, we didn't have stuff built and we made, we made stuff up out there and sort of, um, you know, I, I worked at Image Animation years ago and we worked on loads of low budget movies. Um, so 
I do, I, old, you know, I can go back to the old school methods and go, okay, we haven't got the money to do that, so let's just do it this way. You know, we get polyfoam body and we sculpt a lot of things on the on a flat board and we stick them around, you know, and, and we make something out of nothing really. And uh, I think it's it's quite a useful skill to have on a on a movie like this when you're making things up, you know. Well, I think it's those years of experience that you have that come together to allow you to be, you know, heading a project like this because you're, you're using old, you're using new, and, and bringing all your experience to it. Whereas if yeah. you just got someone, if they just pulled somebody out of makeup school, they would probably be destroyed by trying to have to do yeah. something to this yeah. level. And, and body suits and things like that as well. But also uh, some of it is dealing with someone like Luca who's, you know, um, he – he would look at, he's, there's an artist that he loves called uh, Alfred Kubin. And so we referenced a lot of these characters from Kubin's etchings. You know, even to the, the death character's got this funny, strange little bit of hair that's stuck down, but it's from a particular image that he saw. And there's, um, you know, you'll see Tilda Swinton get killed at the end. And, and, and it's from a particular, another drawing from Alfred Kubin. And, you know, I, I love an artist called Beksinski, and uh, so we used a lot of his textures and stuff in the bodysuit that we built for the death character. And, you know, so there, it's, uh, it's partly the old school making, cobbling things together, but also having, you know, some kind of artistic sensibility to get these characters on screen. Good. Okay. In just a few minutes, we'll take a look at the film and, and get to see it all in living color. Thank you, Mark, for coming out and sharing with us, and we'll start to spare in just a moment.